Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about how you can add a ton of value to your already forged product, products by customization with names and wedding dates and examples like that. But before I do that, I'm gonna let you turn you over to Jessica and she's gonna show you how to make these up on computer first in a template form and the process she goes through before it even comes to me and then I will be showing you later on in the video how I stamp these bowls properly to add just that little bit of extra value for the customer. So without further ado, over to you, Jessica. Let's begin with the Word document open and we'll go under insert and then text box and we're going to draw a text box. Now you can make this any size you want, but if you know your project dimensions are, for example, three inches by three inches, say it's a little tea light dish or something, you can enter the exact dimensions and then you will know that your wording will fit within the specifications of your project. So the first thing we're gonna add is some names. We're gonna say this project is for Ronald and Ivy. And that's gonna be way too small, so we are going to make that for the large stamps. So I'm just highlighting, and then I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna go under font, and I'm gonna change the character spacing. Under spacing instead of normal, we wanna change this to expanded, and we're gonna expand it by two points. And that will give it some extra space between the letters. So we're gonna press OK. And there we have it. Uh, we also need to change the font. We want it to be an Arial font so that it matches that of the stamps. And then we also need this to be in a size 22 for it to be the proper size for the large stamps. Now this could be all on one line or it could be on two lines or three lines even. And then if you want to center it, you just highlight it and then press the center button there and that will get it centered for you and then I'm going to press enter again and now I'm going to add their date which is going to be 01-02-2000 but that looks a little gaudy for the numbers to be that large so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this it's still an Arial font that's fine I'm going to change the font size to 12 and then I'm also going to change the character spacing a little bit. So I'm gonna right click on it once it's selected. I'm gonna go to font again, and then still under the character spacing tab, it's already says the spacing is expanded, but now instead of two, I want it to be 2.5 for the small stamps. That just gives it that little extra bit of space so that if you don't quite get it centered, it will still be not be running over onto the other letters. So that looks good. I'm going to go up and press enter once just to get that down a little lower in that box. And now it is ready to print, but wait a second. I see one thing I can fix here. You'll see my and sign is kind of off-centered a little bit. And what it is, there's a space right there. And I could just get rid of that extra space because if you do have extra spaces, it can throw your characters to one side or the other when you're trying to center it. But there we go. It's all centered now and it is ready to print. All right, so this is my print off that came out of the computer. And this is pretty thin paper, and so it's not gonna hold up by itself. So I'm gonna use a bit of tape and put that on top. And that'll just kind of protect the paper as it's being stamped. And then I, on the back side, I have some double-sided adhesive that I'm gonna put on here. And that'll make it stick to the metal as Roy is stamping it. So this is 3M adhesive. I only need a piece big enough to cover the wording. And uh, I will try to put a link down in the description to this. I found a person that is selling like end cuts off of larger pieces of adhesive and it works really good for this process. And that's where I purchased mine. So this is what it looks like before you cut it. And then you just come along and cut around the wording uh, fairly close. It doesn't have to be right up against each letter but try to keep your line straight and that will make it uh, easier to you to help you get this lined up in the center of your project when you go to stamp so that's really all there is to it and it's ready to go to the stamping phase now 
So now that we have a couple of tags created, the thing that we're going to do now <coughs> is we're going to get this put on the bulb. Now, I do this while there's still forge scale and things like that. It doesn't have to be impeccably clean. The only time that you need to do that is to say that there's going to be, uh, there might be some damage in here. You know, you might have beat it on a rough looking anvil and you want to clean that up first and don't want to sand away your lettering then you'll want to go ahead and, uh, you know, fix that, if you will. Go ahead and grind that out before you take and lay down your label. Now, obviously, this isn't the label Jessica started working on, but this is for a client and a customer, but it's still done the same. So there's that 3M adhesive tape. Again, Jessica put the links to that in the description down below. Um, and again, we're going to be able to lay this on here. Now, the trick to doing this is you want to look directly down on top of the piece and you want to try to get it equal on all sides, obviously, to look for to get this in the center of your bowl. Now, it's my suggestion just to touch a little spot like that in the center and then measure with a ruler to the edges that are kind of folded up there a little bit and make sure that they are going to work out for you and then measure from the front of the bowl in the bottom of the bowl and it's mostly the same so now I can't see in camera here so I'm gonna turn this up where I can look at it so it's not quite where I need it I need to come down a little bit to the left and right it's good to the front and the back it was not and now the final thing you can do is roll it rotate it and if you're looking directly over the top of it it should rotate nice and evenly and look like it's spinning in the circle if it's got a bit of an ellipse, it's not center, and you don't want to go ahead and adhere it. But this is pretty centered up, so we'll go ahead and work that down. Now, you can put the stamping or the lettering on the inside of the bowl. However, uh, however, though, in the years that I have been doing this, it is my suggestion that you don't do that. It is a real pain to hold stamps inside the bowl and try to wail on them and uh, you end up messing up more than what than what it's worth. So I always try to take and put them on the bottom side of the bowl and it makes it a lot easier to take and stamp these in the long run. One last thing to take into consideration. If you have a touch mark that you're putting on the back side of the bowl, like for instance, my touch mark is a cross or a little anvil with a cross in it, it would look really weird if that touch mark was here or here or here, or over here, or over here, it looks really nice if it's right directly in line with the center of whatever you're working on. So again, if it's off center to one side and the touch mark's crooked, it's gonna end up looking crooked. So I don't usually touch, my, touch mark my bowls until I get to this point where I'm ready to do my customization, and then that's why, and then, you'll, then I'll put a touch mark right up here. Uh, I do that as part of the stamping process. Now I'll take you over to the vise where I've got a hammer locked up in there and I'm going to show you the kit that I use to stamp this out. Okay, now that we're over at the vise, I'm going to show you the stamp sets I like to use. Now this is made by Pittsburgh Company. It's an item number 60670. You can buy these at Harbor Freights here in the United States. There's a whole bunch of different manufacturers of these. Uh, they're basically, they're all Chinese manufacturers. <coughs> it all comes out of the same basically place, but uh, they're just a cheap do it, you know, do it yourself kind of stamp set here. Uh, I mean, you're not making them by yourself, but it's for like do it yourself or type things. They're a cheap set. These hold up pretty well. Uh, they will, however, if you're stamping like a carbon steel or something like that, they won't hold up as well as if you're doing softer materials, but with things like working in copper uh, or hotter or, you know, softer, pre-softened, mild steel, they work pretty well in there. Uh, you will see it stamp after a period of time. You will see them get kind of shallow or they'll look like they're flattening out and then uh, you'll just have to buy some more. But again, I think these are only like nine bucks, nine to 10 bucks somewhere around there when I bought these, uh, you know, at tops, they're like 20 bucks online. 
There'll be links in the description for these if you can't get them in your home country at like your local, again, like a little local supply store of some sort. Uh, I'll put some links in the description uh, and be aware those are affiliate links. So if you do purchase them through the affiliate links, they do go to help support the channel uh, at no additional cost to you, but full disclosure there. Do what you will with that. So for my rig here, I've got a sledgehammer. This is like a six pound sledgehammer, I believe it is, locked up in the vise. It has kind of just the right curvature on the face for the stamping of my bowls. So now I'll throw up here, uh, throw up the bowl on top. And the first thing I like to do is I like to be able to take and sort out all of the letters that I'm going to need. Some of these will be repeats but I like to sort them out into the lid. And that way I'm not constantly trying to search 36 stamps or whatever it is there uh, for the one that I need all the darn time. So I know I need those, because we're doing forever yours. Make sure I get an O in there. F-O, I need an R so on and so forth here. I got my E, my V, my R, my O, I got my U, and I need an S. Da, 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 da. Looking for the S. See, they're all black, so it's kind of hard to tell what's what here. There we go. Got my S. So that's all I need just for that first line. So again, handy little tip, sort them out for the words that you need right there. Uh, again, you might have some repeat letters like in forever yours there's definitely some repeats there so no big deal at all go over here and grab my hammer and let's go after it here i'm going to try to make this video fairly short so you guys can kind of get the ideal here i don't have to finish stamping out this whole thing but i want to show you the value of being able to do those stickers so now what i do is i line the top edge of my letter up with the top edge of the letter on, that's supposed to be stamped on the material and then give it a good whack and there you have it there's the first stamp right there you guys can see it now since I'm since I've expired the F and there's no need for that F again now I'm gonna go ahead and give it one more good whack just to make sure that it's been done now I'm gonna put that F away I don't need it anymore in my tray. That has to be confusing. Uh, it does end up slowing the process down. Go on to my O. Now in these sets, the zero for the numbers is the same as the O. So they don't give you any more stamps. They don't give you like a really round one for O. And uh, like you'll see it's got round with like two flats on it for the zero. But then I'll do both my O's at the same time, just like so. And again, always aiming to line up the top edge of your letter with the top edge of the letter here. Be careful that you don't get too fast with this where you get this turned sideways and now you've got this oval shape here going on. Uh, you know, it's not so bad when you're doing an O if it's perfectly circle, circular, but you don't want to get an E turned sideways. Uh, then you've lost it, and there's some ways you can correct that, but trust me, it's a pain in the butt. So we've got that E stamped in there, and like I said, since these are double letters, these are almost like free money at, in time here, because they save time because you don't have to reach for another letter. Once you get them done, again, make sure you put it away. R's, there's three R's in here. Man, this is almost like jeopardy well not jeopardy what do they call that wheel of fortune yeah yeah this is almost like wheel of fortune you know when you say a vowel or a constant and you get like seven of them right in one sentence then you go on and you win motorhome yeah not that i've ever done that but this is almost the same feeling as winning a motorhome all right <laughs> anyways you guys basically get the gist of this i'm going to leave you with a few more little closing thoughts about this after you get this touched up and done you have 
to get this material off here. There's a couple ways that you could do it. If you're really not that close to being finished with the project and you've got a little more manipulation to do on the edge or something or you've got to clean it up anyhow, you can just throw this back in the forge and burn this label off. That's a pretty easy way of doing it. Another easy way is you can soak this in acetone and that'll eat away at the, the adhesive on the back end. That'll scrape it off. Or you could just use your thumb, although this is the hardest way, and just kind of scrape and scooch it off that way. Uh, they also make label peelers that you can do, uh, commercial label peelers, and those will work pretty well, except on copper work that I have found that they have a tendency to scrape and scuff the copper work and require more cleanup work in the sanding afterwards. So again, that's how you do it. That's how quickly and easily you can come across that. Uh, I used to fight that forever, and I do mean forever, kind of like what the word says here. Uh, I used to fight this quite a bit when I'd go to do customization for people because it was like trying to get all your letters straight and lined up in the right size and font and yada yada, and uh, it was a real big pain in the butt. Now, one of the other things that this method is good for as well is you can use this method to lay down engraving lines. So say you don't want to stamp, say the, del say the piece is not conducive to stamping, okay, like this is too delicate or something, in which case you can go ahead and lay down engraving lines. You just start on the end, dig down till you hit material, and if you got a sharp enough engraver, it'll engrave that out and you won't mess up too much of your sticker. Because it being a double-sided adhesive, and because you put the tape over the top of the paper, it, it protects it quite a bit, and then you can do some engraving that way, and uh, it, it does, does help get all your wording all lined up, so this way, you know, it looks more of a professional job of it. So, again, get all these stamped up, and your customers will be happy. Now, on to pricing. If you're taking and adding customization, this is another way that you can add yet one more level of value to your customer because not every customer wants their bowl stamped. So therefore, you can offer customization at an additional charge. It would be my suggestion that on something like this, you add at least another $20 or $25 to the item to cover that extra 10, 15 minutes that it's gonna take you to do this. Now, I personally add I add on about another 30, 35 bucks to it because I have cleanup work that I have to do because I'm going to a super high finish uh, with polishing and things like that. So there's additional cleanup work I have to do because of the stamping. But I just include stamping in all my bowls. If people want it, great. If they don't, then they don't have to get that. But again, it gives you a one more tier option to where you can say, okay, I can offer the bowl just a little cheaper to you if you don't go with stamping or to add that much value back in, you know, it'll be an extra $25 charge to uh, stamp it out with whatever you want there. Um, so that's it. Hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to leave a like. Let us know how we did in the comment section down below. Uh, let us know your thoughts on uh, what you think. You know, what do you add to your customers' uh, projects to take and make them feel more special or to give them that added value that they're paying for? But without further ado, I'm going to get off here. If you'd like to support what Jessica and I do, a great way of doing that is check out our, check out our website over at blacksmithpdfs.com or share these videos around with your friends. That's it for today. God bless you all, and we will catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.